Hello, um, I'm Associate Professor Jenny Pringle, and this is Dr. Dana Almazi from the Institute of Frontier Materials at Deakin University. Um, and we have been developing a new type of device for harvesting low-grade waste heat. So I'll give you a bit of an overview of what it does, and then Dana will show you some of the new materials um, that we've been developing, moving towards the device commercialization. So a thermocell basically has a cold electrode and a hot electrode, and inside of the cell we have an electrolyte that contains a redox couple. Now the potential of a redox couple is temperature dependent, so as soon as we have a temperature gradient across our cell, then we can get a potential gradient, and therefore we can harvest the heat into electricity. Um, the size of that potential gradient that we get with our temperature gradient is given by something called the CBIT coefficient that you'll hear Dana talking a bit about. Um, so over to Dana to, to give me some of the yep. uh, details of the materials. Yep, so we have been working on developing some liquid electrolytes as well as solid electrolytes. So the reason the group moved towards solid electrolytes is to eliminate some issues that uh, typical devices might have, like leaking or evaporation of the electrolyte. So I will demonstrate here some of the electrolytes that we have. So this is a water-based electrolyte, um, which is very typically used um, in the field. So it's water and it has ferrocyanide um, redox couple. Um, so what we do in this group is use polymers to make um, a gel from this electrolyte. So you can see the gel um, is, is quite flexible. Um, so we can use this to make flexible devices down the line. Um, we also use ionic liquid based um, electrolyte. So ionic liquids have more thermal stability um, than water and so it will allow us to take the device to higher temperatures. Um, when we use ionic liquids, we typically use a cobalt based um, uh, redox couple. So this redox couple has um, higher potential difference when we apply um, a given temperature. And when we use polymers, we are able to make these uh, thin and flexible uh, membranes, which can be used um, in the future to make um, wearable devices or devices that can be wrapped around uh, pipelines, for example. So this is a demonstration of the CBEC uh, coefficient and how we measure it. Um, so in, uh, when we do our actual experiment in the lab, we have an enclosed um, device. Um, but this is just for the purpose of this video. So you can see here we have two stainless steel discs, and between them is enclosed here our ferrocyanide gel, and here our cobalt uh, membrane. So what I want to show here um, is just that we are able to get a potential difference. You can see it here when we apply um, the temperature difference across, um, across the gel. So this is um, a hot plate which is being heated at the moment, and the cold electrolyte uh, Electrode is just being cooled by air. So the difference between these two electrolytes is that we are able to get a negative uh, potential here uh, from the ferrocyanide and a positive potential there from the cobalt-based uh, redox couple. This is significant because in the future this will allow us to make um, um, uh, devices that are connected in series, which will allow us to add up the potential and get um, a much higher uh, power output. Okay, so here I will demonstrate some of the devices that we have been developing. Um, so this device is a flexible device made of several electrolyte components. This will allow us to incorporate several uh, gels and membranes with uh, negative and positive CBEC coefficients. This will um, allow us to um, add up the potential and get higher power outputs um, down the line from the device. We have also been using 3D printing to design and make our own um, devices. So this device is made from uh, titanium and the electrodes are coated with a thin uh, layer of um, platinum to make them more uh, catalytic and improve their properties. Here we also have a pouch cell which is um, a flexible uh, device. So inside the pouch cell you get um, electrodes. Um, in this particular one, I'm using stainless steel mesh because it's quite cheap, um, but we coat it with a layer of carbon to improve um, its properties.